for tuning in for another D6 pack video. I'm going to be doing another board game video review today, and today I'm going to be reviewing Veldora. This is a game which, in my opinion, has been kind of under the radar. Um, this is an older game, so that might be part of the reason, but I think uh, it's also a pick up and deliver game, and that might turn some people off to it, but I think this one's got some really interesting mechanisms in it, and it's a lot of fun to play. It's quick, it's easy to teach, easy to learn. So let me turn my camera around, and I'll show you what it's all about. So here's a typical setup for the game. This is assuming it's a three-player game. There's not a whole lot of difference, though it'll play up to five, and the only real setup change is that you take out a couple of the craftsman tiles for a smaller player game to shorten the length of it. However, um, each player starts with the same resources. You get a character card, which shows your color. It shows the max amount of silver you can hold and the max amount of commissions that you can hold at any point as well as your provisions, which you can mark by flipping the card over. I'll explain what all those mean and how you get them in a little bit, but um, you also start with one silver. You start with a backpack that can hold one gold, and you also get a turn summary card. So on your turn, the first thing that you are going to do is you can move your pawn as far as you want as long as you don't go through another city so here's fine here's fine this is not fine because you would have to cross through one of these two cities in order to get there so let's say that I go here one once you're done with your movement you then take an action and one of the actions that you can take is to collect as many gemstones as you can hold from that space. So in the beginning of the game, you only have space to hold one gold. So all you could collect would be that one gold. Um, if you were to continue into a city, you have a couple more options. Uh, one of the options you can do is to purchase either a commission or equipment card. So these two cities will always hold commissions. These two cities will always hold equipment. And if you choose to take that action, you first are allowed to flip over one page of the book, which gives you an option of two equipment or two commissions that you can take. If you don't like either of those two, you can spend one silver per page to continue flipping through the book. Once you find one that you do like, you can purchase that by paying the cost shown in this banner. So equipments will always be one gold and commissions will always be one silver. There are equipments that will hold every color of gem. And there's also a horse and a cart, which have an amount of silver that you pay, and that will hold any color of gem that you want it to be. You can only have one of each type of equipment, though. And as far as commissions go, you can have up to three, which is denoted on your character card. The other option you can do while in a city is you can replenish your provisions. So this side is the side that you start on. If you flip that, that shows you have provisions. What provisions are useful for is, say you wanted to go from the center space all the way over to here. You would have to skip through a city, but you can use your provisions to allow you to do that. And then you would have to replenish them again on a future turn. Another option you have uh, if say you're running out of gold, you can or silver. I'm sorry. There are three silver mines on the board, and if you 
end your movement on one of those spaces, you can replenish your silver up to its maximum of six. If you have commissions, say I've taken this commission that says deliver one silver to this location. If I end my turn on that location, I can turn in the required resource to complete that commission, and then I take a worker or craftsman of that color, and eventually these stacks will run out. So if the stack is empty, you take a craftsman from the stack to the left of that, or clockwise. Once you've collected craftsmen of a specific number, for example gold, once you've collected three gold craftsmen, you can create a workshop. And then from that point on, whenever you complete a commission of that color, you get a 10 point bonus token. Uh, so silver is not necessarily the best example because when you are completing a commission, for example, blue, in order to complete this, you have to put, pay a blue gem. So when you pay that, that goes into this empty field. And throughout the game, these road spaces will deplete of their gems. So in order to get gems at that point, you can go to one of these harbor spaces. And when you take an action there, you can collect gems from this field of whatever color you want, equal to the number of boats that are in that space. So this one you can collect two gems, this one will only allow you to collect one. When completing your movement, if you end your turn on a space with another player, you have to pay them one silver. If there are two players there, you have to pay each of them one silver. So silver is a fairly important resource in this game. I should also say that the game ends when one of these stacks is left. So once all but one of them is depleted. So that is pretty much the entire game. Um, at the end of the game, you just count up points. You get points based on the commissions you complete. Each commission has a point value shown in the bottom corner there. You also get uh, 10 points for each color of craftsmen you have in front of you. Each workshop is worth a specific number of points shown in the bottom corner. And any bonus tokens you get are 10 points. And then finally, any unused gems that you have in your uh, storage are worth one point each. So whoever has the most points wins the game. All right, so that's Veldora. Um, I really like this game. It's quick and easy to play, which is something that I'm always looking for. Uh, the components are really cool. Those books are a lot of fun to flip through. And Adrian likes any game that has those little gems in it. So that was a pretty easy sell for me. Uh, she wasn't certain about this game, but I think at its heart, this game really is a pick up and deliver game. So if you don't like that type of mechanism, you might this might not be the game for you. But uh, I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I think the biggest downfall for this game is that it is a three to five player game, which I can appreciate that they're not wanting to lie and say that it can be play two players, but at the same time, it made it difficult for us to get to the table initially. This sat on our shelves for a couple of months before we actually got to play it, and I think it suffered a little bit from that. But since then, I think it gets quite a bit of play anytime we have a large enough group, three or four players. Um, this is one that is always in the consideration list. There is an expansion that has a two-player variant in it, but I haven't played with that one yet, so I'm not ready to comment on how that changes the game. Uh, once I do, 
maybe I'll make another review and explain how that changes it. But for now, uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of what your opinion on Valdora might be. If it's something you might be interested in or if it's a pass for you. But if you have played the game, uh, leave me a comment. Let us know what you think of it. You can contact us on all of our socials at D6 Pack Podcast or by email at uh, d6packpodcast at gmail.com. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Bye.